This is the former track bed of the Hollywell Junction to Hollywell Railway, which used to run through this part of Flintshire in North Wales. But that's for another part of this series. I'm going to climb this shallow ridge here. And I'm going to enter the site of, in my opinion, and probably most people, the best preserved and the most interesting site on the whole of the Greenfield Valley's industrial heritage. And that is the Greenfield Battery Works. But before we have a look at that, right in front of us, we've got a very interesting ruin. Now let's get round to the front so as I can show you exactly what we've got. So what we have here is a former cottage known as Strand Cottage and it was used by the watchman of the site here at the battery works, basically the modern day equivalent to a security guard. So let's walk in through the original front door. I'd like to think that these are contemporary steps, the original steps. So we walk in and straight away we're into a very small living room. You can see the divider there and it went up there. We had a fireplace over here on the wall. To my left on the north side, we've got two rooms you can see they're divided and we've got the step up into them obviously there was a former wall there this one here is the smaller of two bedrooms and then over here we've got the remains of what used to be a small kitchen quite well preserved up to about seven or eight courses of stone and turning round staying in the living room we have over on the south side much more vegetated up but still visible and this was the master bedroom took up the whole of the south side i think here you can still see the original flooring of the living room the original flagstones and here we have the dividing wall from that bedroom in the lounge where our door would have been there to enter these steps incidentally i think they've been added at a later date to uh, accommodate this footpath which has been built through so let's take a look outside, shall we? So we're outside into what would have been the classic cottage garden. Beautiful flowers coming up here. We can see that on the photograph. Now, turning to our main site. And how can I start anywhere else other than this fantastic chimney which stands before me? So what age is our chimney? Well, to be honest with you, I can't find any information. And if I'm honest, there's a bit of an anomaly. Have a look at this picture. This undated photo appears on the information board in front of the remains of Strand Cottage. It clearly shows the whitewashed cottage and the chimney on its western side, a chimney which is largely different to the one we see today. So is this an earlier chimney? Initially, I thought yes, but after looking closer, I reasoned otherwise. The picture appears to show a cylindrical structure as opposed to square. But look here, 
The outline appears severely indented at the base. Could this be plant covering, a thick ivy maybe, distorting the profile? So from this magnificent chimney, we now head into the main site of Greenfield Battery Works. So our chimney, I think, would have been attached to this area down here. So down here we have the former boiler works, the boiler house. And I think we'd have had a flue going off to our chimney, possibly underground, but possibly also attached to this entrance that we can see here, which is no longer in existence today. Before we go into full explore mode, let's get some bearings in relation to the rest of the Heritage Park. Of the inland sites I've investigated, I first looked at Lower Cotton Mill, which is here, then Meadow Copper Mill, a few yards down the valley from where I am now, the Battery Works. But what is a Battery Works? Nothing to do with electrical batteries. My best interpretation is a derivation of the Latin batter, which literally means to batter, or in the case of our copper works, to hammer into shape. Initially built by Thomas Patton of the Warrington Company in 1766, the battery hammers here were powered by water wheels to hammer copper bowls, pans and pots before sailing the short distance to Liverpool. From there, they were exported to West Africa in exchange for black slaves, where the unfortunate slaves would be transported in the most inhospitable and unsanitary conditions to be worked often to death on the West Indies sugar plantations under cruel masters. On the back of these appalling practices, Thomas Patton and his fellow shareholders would have become very wealthy indeed. This site has seen many changes over the last two and a half centuries, culminating in a collection of empty ruins, which due to the fragile condition of some, renders it off limits and fenced off. Fortunately, the drone can explore where feet cannot. So looking out onto our causeway, first we'll look over this side. And this is the battery works pool. Remember we saw similar in the uh, rolling mill. This one, is largely dry we've got lots of reeds etc which you can see but it's largely dry so this area of the battery works pool still has water it still has flowing water it's coming from greenfield uh, stream which comes from the hills up there and then flows down into the valley so let's get to the end of this little pier so you can see the water coming down, it's flowing. It's not flowing into this weir. It's flowing down here under my feet. There's a concrete structure down there. And then it flows into there and into our main site. This is a later addition, I believe. I'm not sure when it was introduced, probably 20th century, and is only there in case of times when, if the, when the river floods and it uh, acts as a extra flood relief. And the water, I mean, you can hear it rushing, will come out here. And down to there. Which brings me to the first things that I want to look at on this site. And that's the sites of the four water wheels. So the four wheels that we had here at the battery works... Well, the first one would have been located right here beneath me and you can see the wheel pit right there in the other side of these uh, plants here and it would have sat there it would have been fed so let's move the camera down you can see this channel coming through the causeway with the pond to my back here and it would have been an overshot wheel where the water would have been fed on top of the wheel and would have powered it by dropping on top of it. This diagram shows how water fed from a pool via a sluice drops on top of the wheel, thus forcing its direction of motion. 
the hammer connected to the wheel by an axle was allowed to pivot up and down as cams were engaged, forced by the wheel's momentum. This view from the dam wall southern side beautifully shows the former sluice and the channel from which water would have been guided onto the wheel. The second of those wheels would have been just a little further to the right of the first one. And that would have been found here. And you can see clearly the course of today's current stream running through there. This is our wheel pit here. I think this one was probably an overshot uh, supply again. But if you look down, there doesn't appear to be a channel coming from the causeway. Unless it's been taken away, there does appear to be a bit of destruction work down there. And if I go to the other side of the causeway, so back to the pond side. So you can clearly see the sluice for the first water wheel. The second one, you can just see the edge of the sluice poking out from this side of the pier. So I think as it's more or less the same as the first one, we are definitely looking at an overshot feed. Once again, the view onto the dam wall's southern side confirms the site of the former sluice. The third of our wheels would have been found over there, running parallel to the causeway, so perpendicular to the first two. And you can see where the railings are, that's our wheel pit. You can also see like a metal channel, I think from here, um, coming out of the wall at the top of the wheel pit if you see and i think once again that's where our water channel would have come out and another overshot wheel the drone footage here is particularly interesting as it allows us an impossible view otherwise confirming the location of the wheel pit but also it shows what appears to be a metal water channel still in situ and intact and more or less confirming a third overshot fed water wheel now the 1901 map marks a fourth wheel as being right there where that big buddlier bush is now i cannot see any evidence as to which way it stood so was it flush with that wall or was it flush with that wall i can see some railings down there and what looks like it could be evidence of a wheel pit and we've got marks on the wall like gouge marks which seem to be in a circular motion and a bit of repointing which is also in like a circular motion so i'm thinking maybe that our wheel would have been parallel uh, to where i'm standing on the causeway today now how was this fed well the map of 1901 states that there is a sluice just down here and a possible sluice um but how it would have fed a wheel well here is that 1901 map and here is the site of the fourth wheel the others being located here it depicts a sluice which lines up with the fourth wheel, while just above it, it also depicts the site of a possible sluice. Looking in from the pool side, and we can clearly see the sluice where water would have fed through. The possible sluice site shows an unusual arrangement of brickwork and possibly a blocked up earlier one. But what of the wheels facing? The drone footage is somewhat concealed by this large buddleia bush, but I think enough is visible to more or less confirm that a wheel pit is visible, outlined by the metal railings, indicating that the wheel is flush with the building's southern wall. A look back at the map would also tend to indicate as such, thanks to the location of this recess, which would appear to be just the right size and shape to fit a water wheel. If the wheel's location is correct, and I believe that it is, how would the water now reach it, with our wheel now being perpendicular to that feed? Again, the drone footage may give us a clue.
Looking at Wheel 4's sluice, it shows what appears to be a supported frame, probably once a metal water channel, similar to that visible above Wheel 3's pit. Elevated on a brick column, it gives a suggestion to a longer channel, which could have once fed Wheel 4's water. As with all of the remains here at Greenfield, what you see today is a mixture of all the changes and alterations to the site since the 1760s. Despite these changes, the 1901 map is invaluable as it gives an identity to most of the buildings that are left. Here we're flying over the remains of an engine house, once presumably home to a thumping steam engine. Now, minus its chimney, its silent shell protects greenery from the outside environment. Next to the engine house was a metal shearing shop. This is an area where various metals would be cut to shape using lathes, mills and other heavy duty machinery. You may notice the hanging circular rings on the right hand wall. They look very sinister and noose like, but were likely used to hold a pipe in position. western side and clearly to cover every structure would take forever but a couple did arouse my curiosity the first being a series of furnaces so here is a closer view this is the closest or the best angle i can get from this distance and you can see uh, the furnace house was over there and they are our furnaces probably attached to some chimneys as well which we'll look on the map and we can get a closer look using the drone at those Next to no information is available for these furnaces. However, my sparse knowledge and some research suggests that these are likely to be iron smelting furnaces. Remember, a copper works needs to be maintained, requiring the manufacture of tools and equipment made from other metals. Of course, what's left is just the stone remnants with all the metal since being removed. Moving on, I was intrigued by the title gasometer on the 1901 map. In my mind, a gasometer is a large cylindrical structure once familiar in all large towns and cities. What we have here is a circular course of brickwork, perhaps 10 to 12 feet in diameter. This is likely just the foundations, but close to the furnace and a foundry. Was there a connection between the three? Moving west along the causeway or dam, we're going to exit the main work site now. And there's two ways we can go. We can either go south and north. I'm going to explore both. In front of me, we've got this wonderful remains of the building known as the Bricklayer's Store. And I'll come back to that momentarily. But first, we're going to take this left path and turn south. Now, you would not believe today but this is the site of something called Battery Row. And it was a row of 35 two-storey buildings. They backed right onto the pool here and extended into the trees there. And they were built in the 1780s, I believe it was, for the factory workers who worked over there in the copper works. But what's left today? Well, I've had a good look round here and there's very little. We've got some traces of what could possibly be concrete floors i'm not convinced personally i've had a good scrabble around and there's very very little to see you've got quite a bit of stonework obviously from demolition now these were these, these cottages were demolished in the 1960s along with quite a lot of stuff around here this superb photo, dated 1935, depicts Battery Row at the centre, clearly visible with their rear facing onto Battery Pool. Next, I'm going to take you to potentially, I say potentially because this is what I think, the only significant part of Battery Row 
which could remain today and that involves us going inside the lovely bricklayer store building now just a shell today and i'm not even sure what bricklayer store would interpret got a lovely wooden lintel still there look and covered in ivy looks very evocative was it literally just as it says a store for bricklayers tools and equipment but over here on the south side if you notice the whole building is made of this lovely layered stone on the north side it's made of brick and i think that this was built up to the edge of the brickwork store and this is the north wall of the first house of Battery Row. So moving north along the western side of our work site, you can see it there behind the annoying fence. And straight away you can see this wonderful cobbled road surface, which I believe extends all the way across it's exposed in the middle because today it's used as a footpath, but I reckon it still exists under the grass there. On our left hand side, there's a vacant area. And even on the 1901 map, it doesn't show a lot. We've got this raised area here, which is known as simply shed, very ambiguous. Could have been just that, a shed where they just put any old rubbish. Nothing else is marked on the map for this area here. But we do have another feature, which I'd love to know really. It's a very simple thing. I, it, to me, it's the sort of place where you would store stone or coal. Would it be called a, a scuttle? Like a recess cut um, built into the wall there. So you could store stone or that sort of thing. There's two of them, there's another one there. Now I'm gonna take these steps here. I don't know if these are contemporary. They look as though they're old enough to be. And this takes me into the area of another boiler house. And straight away we had the cobbled floor up there. Look at this, we've got a lovely brick floor here. And that extends right across this whole area, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Because it was the boiler house, we had, well, we had two chimneys in this area very close together we have one more or less in that corner i don't know if you can see the area because we've got the sun right in our face here it's over here so in the cornerish area here there was a, a, a chimney rising up and there would have been another one a few yards away inside the works area so let's go down these steps and these are particularly good and look at those i do like those now they must be contemporary but if I take you round this road here and towards the river, there's something rather special I want you to see. I'm just gonna leave our site for a bit. So there's our works. Now this area here was, according to the map, formerly a private road. Still got a few cobbles down there. I think this led out towards the other factories and the railway which ran up there but what i've come to look at to see if anything exists down here and it's a bit branchy and bending low but we can see our river down here and i was wondering if there's some some nice brickwork to see down here And straight away, do you know what? I think that's paid dividends. So look at that over there. We've got, looks like a bricked up tunnel or culvert. Now the building above me is marked as the warehouse on the map. We've got this lovely culvert here. What have we got in here? And then you've got some brilliant brickwork in there and some large spiders but i've come prepared today so let's see how deep this water is okay and we can see there 
our tunnel so there's our river heading north to the sea and I'm gonna have a look I don't know how far I'm gonna go but I'm gonna have a look it's quite low I'm hoping to bend down a bit but the water isn't too deep I'm guessing that this culvert has to be 18th century and it still looks to be in pretty good nick a bit of calcification there slow going the silt under my foot is quite sludgy so this is the first time I think I've ever walked through a water tunnel or culvert I'm not really a fan of it to be honest with you it's getting lower as well but there's always a certain amount of intrigue and interest involved and now it seems to be on rock is that the bedrock it's become extremely shallow so we get a good view from here so I don't know if you can see but up ahead so we've got water the far water tumbling down in the distance that's coming from the weir uh, where the dam so to speak is and then comes into the factory itself this one here is the square um, outlet that you can see in the factory floor the factory area right in the center which uh, I'll fly the drone I'll fly the drone over look that's interesting because we got brick up here but look we got it's made of rock here and it's become very shallow as well now look at that even down here in the dark plants grow Firm footing under here. There's not really any danger. Ah, now look at this. I might have to eat my words because here we have a tunnel coming from the west, and that can only be a feed from. Ah, there we go. Yes. So that confirms it. This must be the feed from the western wheel very much reduced today but there is still a bit of a trickle and then up there is our outlet where it comes from the milk pool and then up there is our factory So moving back towards our factory site and we'll look at the last bits on the northern end. Straight away we've got these lovely stairs again. I'm going to have a look quickly on this side. Now the building that I just went under when I went walked through the river that was this building here on this corner. There's only one wall left of it and that was known as the Smith's Shed. Presume um, a reference to blacksmiths back on the western side we've got this the remains of this huge 
area this was two buildings remember i said this was the boiler house or a boiler house where we had the two chimneys that's where i came down originally from the cobbled roadway and then we got another area here and this is marked as the wiring mill so let's walk up on here and as you can see nice and wet after the recent rain if you remember just a moment i pointed out the brick floor well here is that brick floor again probably exposed because of the recent rains a bit more and i think like the cobbled road up there the whole of this extent of the brick floor still exists and then as we move to the northern extent of the wire mill we come to the last couple of buildings or the last building on the site and unfortunately i can't find any information as to what these were we've got what looks like it could be an air receptacle for water to go through and that's backed up a bit when you look over the other side when I was round the other side, you see, that's where I pointed out that I thought water might come through. And I still think along those theories, because this looks like it could be a container area for water. You've got a, that uh, culvert arch area there, which looks like it, it could uh, move water about. And as for that structure, I've absolutely no idea. It looks repointed and reused. This brick stone column here we got two there has that fallen off there were there four would it uh, originally in like a you know like a canopy area i'd love to see some old pictures and i have no idea what this was for i think it was for processing liquid of some description but that's as far as my theory goes and i'd love to know more if anyone's got any firm evidence and then as we leave our site completely we'll finish off with the wonderful clock tower definitely visible to the workers this clock tower would have ensured their good timekeeping so let's have a look inside shall we looking up and it seems in relatively good condition obviously the clockwork mechanism has gone and the roof looks relatively recently replaced but the plaster at least appears to be contemporary and i think a fitting place to finish this explore of the battery works